you know, one of the things about martial arts is that a lot of contradictory things can be true. And even within the same art, what you do has to be true to your system. And not just your system in terms of the martial arts that you do, but the system that you use to implement it. So, in other words, whether it's use of key or it's something strategic, you have to have a methodology to apply your techniques, um, whether it's for training, for meditation, or for battle. And if you start mixing those, you basically develop big holes in, the, in what you do. So I personally am not a fan of this modern thing of, oh, I do Aikido and I don't feel confident on the ground, so I'm going to try and do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu on the ground and I'm going to try and you know, throw punches when I'm standing up because it kind of breaks up what is good about what you do. Mind you, I'm not saying that anybody can't do, like, anybody can do whatever they like, you know, and as I was saying before to Justin, there's many parts to Buddha, you know, um, whatever's good for you is good. And, uh, but for me, everything has to be systematic in the way I approach it, because every opponent, it's like a lock, and the key has to fit the lock. I have to have a set of tools that if I'm fighting someone, whether I'm going to try and knock them out, kill them, or just suppress them. You know, how am I going to apply what I know to the kind of attacks they're giving me, the kind of strength and kind of the attributes that they have? How am I going to do that? What's my approach to do that? And uh, just to give you a kind of a little bit of an example, like when you do Yokomanuchi, I was always taught to go over the top. And the reason you go over the top is it's easy to catch an arm lock if they go underneath. And it's not actually that you can't go underneath, but certainly within the way I've structured my technique, going underneath to do that block is bad. Now, I've got a friend that I train with, and he's a professional Thai boxer, and he's also a Kali and Panatukan expert, and he comes under. And, you know, you can't fault, I can't fault what he does, he's a really good knife fighter. But that's his system, he's doing him. You know, you kind of have to pick a lane and stick in your lane. And to me, it's wrong with the kind of the MMA idea that I get good at everything. It's like, if you're not a professional, it's going to be tough to be good at everything. And I don't know, for me, like it's, you've got one life, you pick something, you get good at it, and then you apply that thing to all situations. And the thing that nobody ever tells you about with these real world techniques is it's a completely different scenario. Like if Rama, if Rama's here and I know I'm going to fight him, right? whether it's grappling or whether it's striking, it's a completely different scenario to I'm over here and he hits me. Or he comes up to me and he's trying to kind of get close to me while his mates are, are going to try and hit me and mug me. It's a completely different thing. And to start the fight from being unready or having your kid with you or your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, it's, a compl it's not in the same ballpark of techniques and attitude that you need to do it. You know, these are concepts that work. And I think the thing that's lost about Aikido is Aikido's done now in a way it never used to be done. O-sensei said there's no forms in Aikido. There's no one, two, three in Aikido. And now pretty much that's all people do. And because, you know, we're trying to remember the art of a guy that's dead, that's to a certain extent something we have to do. But, you know, we often talk about people of certain styles, my own style, who are so fixed on a certain guy that they don't listen to what he was telling them to do and they just try and copy him. And they end up being all stiff. And Aikido is about being loose and flowing with the situation. And, and that seems to have been lost. And the other thing is that um, O-sensei students were almost exclusively martial arts experts. So nobody had to be taught how to block, how to fight, how to or to have that, more than actually knowing what to do, having the attitude to do it. And actually, this before I start, this is another thing that I'll mention, in that when my students ask me about self-defense, you know, I would like to be the guy that said, oh, look, you know, worry about what the law says and worry about this and that, but I'm just not that guy because I've been out there. And it's like, you've got to live before you worry about the law. That's number one. And if it's serious enough to fight, I assume you would have left if you could have. So the fact that you couldn't leave means that it's very serious 
and that you can't afford to be thinking about what happens afterwards. You've got to, you've got to survive in the moment. You don't really have these options about how you approach it. And we, as Aikidoka, we want to like control someone without hurting them. But the reality of it, unless we're so far in front of them, you know, it's very unlikely that you would get a situation where a dedicated attacker who's trying to hurt you, that you can suppress them without finishing them off. Well, look, I've been doing it for a long time, and uh, I can't do it. And I could tell you a story about once when I tried to do that and it failed abysmally. But um, because how do you walk away from someone that's not unconscious if they still want to fight? Or, um, or if you haven't broken their arms or something, you know, that's, that's the bottom line. Is if they still want to fight and you've done everything right, that's a problem you're going to come, come up with. But anyway, with our Aikido, I think people need to know what they're practicing for. We have practice that we do in the dojo, and if we have practice that we do for street fighting, that's a different mindset because you, you don't have the mindset that I do things and that I don't get hurt. You have the mindset that I'm going to complete it regardless of what happens. Like, I don't, someone has a knife, I don't think, how am I going to do this without getting cut? I think I'm going to do this regardless of how it cuts me. And it's a very different attitude. And you can tell the difference of someone that's trained when you stand up in front of them. That's why I hate all these people who get on YouTube, like this one guy, oh, I, I sparred this MMA guy and he just beat me up and I'm a third down at Aikido and... I'm thinking, what kind of, I mean, I was going to use a bad word there, but what kind of fool, you know, who has never faced a determined aggressor thinks they're going to pop up and fight a professional and do well? I mean, I remember the first time I sparred a trained boxer. And I thought, like, I was confident, I was a kid. But, you know, the moment you see someone, you know, this head floating around and punching you occasionally at will, you realise there's a whole other realm to martial arts and skill that an amateur doesn't really understand. So if you want to go that next level, you have to choose to go to the next level. And I always say we have to, as a student, as a teacher, you have to know what you're teaching and teach that thing and do it honestly. And, and teach the students what each level means and what commitment it requires. You know, and... Um, you know, when I see people, they want to be able to spar some, some full contact fighter. They think, well, if you don't put in the same kind of brutal training as they do, how do you think you're going to stand up to it? Like, all this stuff that people say about Aikido think that's inadequate. It's not. It's like, if you want to be good at Aikido against Thai boxing, kickboxing, judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, just spar. You know? It's, that's what it is. You know, and it will hurt.